Let's see. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. And hello. Hello, Moira. I'm so excited to have you here and playing with these uh, different platforms to invite people to this live. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. And now we're live on Instagram. Cool. And um, just hello. Hello to everyone. Happy Tuesday, maybe. If you're <laughs> down under, it's already Wednesday because you're ahead of the game. And Moira, you're in Italy. I am. And I'm out in Texas. So welcome, everyone, to our live. Um, wow. Moira, I am so delighted. For those of you that don't know um, this beautiful being, Moira Bramley, I've known for many years, actually, probably good, so. over 10 years. And, um, you know, we've gotten to see each other shift and change and um, choose different things in our own lives. And recently, I said at the beginning of the year, we sat together and started a new adventure of creating something together. And we're inviting you to this conversation because this is part of this energy that we're looking at um, with receiving, being, and having um, something greater in our lives. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Moira, to the live. It is called yeah. The Rightness of Not Receiving. And I mm -hmm. love that title. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm wondering, would you, would you like to say anything about your journey? I would say, you know, we yeah. both have been playing with the access consciousness tools for some time. Mm -hmm. And this topic about receiving is a big topic. Massive, uh, massive. Well, actually, one of the things that I got to, um, I think it was actually in the profit class, which was what, five months ago or something? Yeah. I was like, why does it seem like when I am... Um, receiving like really receiving it feels like i'm taking mm -hmm. and what we eventually got to was that twist that we often if anybody's watching this and hasn't done access consciousness there'll be a lot of things that you might not understand um but just get the energy of it so that twist that came from years and years of um i've always been a person who's had generosity of spirit until i got too aware and then i realized <laughs> None of it was mine, that, that, not the generous spirit, the, the withholding. And what I realized, what Dane got me to see was that when you're truly gifting to somebody and they don't receive it or they take, you will so, it will so seem like it's yours and you'll go to the wrongness of you, almost like you have... Um, Oh, what's that word? Like you've you've assaulted somebody. Like if you give to somebody and they really don't want to receive what you've gifted, it it will seem like you've to you. It will seem like you've assaulted somebody. Yeah. So. And it's it's so interesting because I have a, a a memory of a being really young, maybe maybe even four years old, and um, my father drank a lot. So as yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> As he sat there at the table, I remember this one moment. Um, there was always this desire to contribute something to to go and and like because I could tell he was sad. Like there was sadness there. There was something there. You yeah. know, as a little kid, you're like, what can I do? What can I? And his frequent comment is like, what do you want? And he would say it in Spanish, like, ¿Qué quieres? Um, barrera. Wow. And wow. it was, like, what do you want, brown noser? And yeah. after that repeated comment, there was, I, I twisted that to mean yes. that I was looking to take something, that I had a hidden agenda. Yeah. And, that I was, and, and I noticed that part of like, and even to this day, there's that sense of what he can receive from me, but yeah. it is, you know, limited. But I've looked at that, that twist or that, um, that space of going into the wrongness of me, like, Oh, there was something wrong. I came in with an agenda and yeah, you that know, one. One. Yeah. yeah. So can we do a quick can I do a quick quick clearing on that? Please. So all the structures that you guys are using to create the lack of receiving or the belief in the rightness of not receiving, are you willing to destroy and uncreate everything? Yes, yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod pox, shorts, boys, holy smokes and beyonds. 
<laughs> and for those of you that might not know what Moira just rattled off, that's called yeah. the uh, clearing statement, uh, Vax's consciousness, mm -hmm. an incredible tool to begin to dismantle and clear those stuck energies. And um, we'll have some people maybe write the links that you guys can then yeah. follow to get an explanation of that. Okay. It sounds crazy, guys. And it, when I first heard it, I was a psychotherapist. And when I first heard it, I'm like, okay, these guys have lost it. It's crazy, but it works. <laughs> and you'll begin to notice as we use it, if we use it more in this live, but you'll begin to sense an energy and it's like, Ugh! and then yeah. you run this clearing statement. It's like, oh, something got light or something shifted. And that for me has been the gift of the access consciousness tools. Yep. It's like, I didn't have to work so hard to figure it out. It's that willingness to... Let go of that energy. Yeah. Yes. Let go of yeah. that energy. So, um, sorry, you were going to say something, Sylvia. No, 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 please go ahead. Well, just like if you look at the, the history that we've gone through of um, give and take or gifting and receiving, I mean, if you go way back to when there, there was a clay tablet, which was the equivalent of money, like I'll give you a cow and you'll give me four bushels of corn when, they, when, it, when harvest comes. So we were we, right from the whole way back that, you know, it, we were taught to give and take. It was an exchange rate. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what the exchange rate is, if you receive something from somebody, you have to give something in return. And that has been that um, transactional reality of, you know, and also where we tend to judge ourselves, am I giving enough for what I received? Yeah. Yeah. You know, or should I give more to validate that I yeah. am grateful for what they've given me? Yeah. So all that computation of gifting and receiving really yeah. limits what's available. And it, it brings up, it does bring up your worth. Am I worth this? Am I worth receiving this without gifting anything back? So it's created that like your being is almost excluded. Well, not almost. It's like the get rather than I mean, if you if there is no Wow, ADHD. <laughs> if there is no gifting, it is unless you are so present, you know that that person hasn't gifted because you can still receive if somebody hasn't gifted. And that's a muscle of, well, it wasn't a gift, but I'm going to receive it because you can entrain to somebody else's energy and mess yourself up and not be clear on what's yours and what's theirs. So again, uh, uh, everything that is, <laughs> All the energy that's up right now, are you willing to destroy and uncreate it? Yes, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, podpox, shots, boys, pull bads, and beyonds. And I remember when my mother was dying in hospital, she had had a lung removed, she had cancer. And I remember going in to see her in the intensive care unit. And she, um, the, the nurses came in to lift her up and change her dressing and she lifted herself up before they could lift her up because she didn't want to be a nuisance. And I, I, that was a beyond for me. I was like, what are you doing? You know, because she, she, you know, God, not get too graphic, but she hurt herself by trying to lift herself up. And I was like, that's it. I will never do anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. amazing because culturally, you know, growing up, um, both my parents are from Mexico. And in and then also grew up Catholic. So you have those two combinations. And it there's such this embedded um oh entrainment of it's better to gift than to receive. Yeah. So so really where the rightness of not receiving is yeah. very um uh what's the word acknowledged, praised, like you know, no, yeah. no, no, no. Let yeah. me give you even more. But no, yeah. no, don't give me anything. I will not receive. Yeah. That that's this pride of yeah, yeah, <laughs> pride of not receiving. Yeah. Uh, that is, guys, destroying on credit. Please, wrong, good, and bad, all nine, pod block, shorts, boys, pull bads, and beyonds. Wow. And, it, and it's interesting to see how this shows up in so many people's lives. Like I remember being in college, and um, a good friend of mine, um, our professor, was like, "Hey, there's this scholarship coming up. You guys should both apply." And it was like, okay, and this is a scholarship to receive money, right? It, yeah. and, and it was like, why not? And my friend, I remember her saying, Amal, well, did you, you know, write your essay? She's like, you know, I'm not going to apply. I think there's probably someone out there that needs this more than me. <laughs> and I was like, let yeah. them tell you that. Why are you going to not, you know, that 
because so I applied and yeah. I received, I think maybe close to a thousand dollars. And then mm -hmm. here's the other, and then I think the following year I got a postcard in the mail that said, Oh, I mean, we would like to invite you to, to uh, apply again. And in the fine print, it said there would be a whole new committee. And so I thought, well, I'll just send the same essay. <laughs> I think I changed. <laughs> you <What>? cheater. <laughs> I changed one or two words and I got even more money the second time. <laughs> but I noticed that energy because I thought, wow, she actually, for her, it was more important that she open up the space for someone else that in my world, I'm all, oh, am I just like mean and vicious and greedy? Because those yes. are the energies that show up. I'm yeah. so greedy, selfish. Yeah. Avarish, a taker. <laughs> and, and for me now seeing like the universe, right? Now we look at, we're asking for things in our lives to change, relationship, money, things with our bodies. And yet we're not willing to receive the gifts that are available. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, and I think a lie, a lie of lack on the planet. It's an absolute lie. You know, there is no lack. When you hear about people starving in country, that doesn't come from lack. There is there is warehouses of money around the world. It comes from stupidity, not lack, stupidity. And I don't mean the the, the people who are starving are stupid. I'm talking about the politicians and the the way the country's run and everything. So everything that brings up, time's a good so we can destroy and uncreate it. Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all mine, pod pox, shorts, boys, povads and beyond. So everywhere you've decided that you can't ask for what you would like because you're going to be taken, are you willing to ask to perceive and know and receive the lie that that, that is? Totally. Yeah, everything that is, time's a good so we can destroy and uncreate it. Right now, good, bad, all nine, pod, pox, shorts, boys, pull that and beyond. And, and that I get, you know, one of the things people often will acknowledge with ease is that when you go out into nature, there's a sense of relaxation and, and the willingness to receive from the trees, the plants, yeah. the sun, the wind. You know, there's this openness yeah. to receiving. And, it's, yeah. and yet I'm like, wow. And yet in our lives, we're willing to, we're, where we tend to then struggle, suffer, or have a problem where we, what, what what's like actually occurring is those blocks that we put in place not yeah. to receive. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, go on. No, 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 please. Well, I was just going to say to people, um, anything that's heavy and dense is a lie. And if you're not receiving because it feels really heavy and dense, that's a lie. So what would it take to what Sylvia is saying is nature has no judgment. It just receives. It will receive the rain. It will receive the nutrition of the tree that's, you know, dying next door. It will receive everything. And the same as the creatures. We're actually the same, but we've been, in, we've, we've been programmed and we entrained to this um, judgment of receiving is bad and wrong. And lack. So, wow. Yeah. Destroy <laughs> so, you know, part of the gift of this tool of the clearing statement is that when things come up, you know, we get to now clear whatever is there. Yeah. And I often remind people too, it's like when you use this clearing statement and you're willing to destroy and uncreate, you can only destroy and uncreate what's not true. Yeah. So, what gets to surface there is the acknowledgement of what is true. And that's that lightness and space of you. Yeah. So everything, all of that brought up in this conversation really about stretching our receiving um, and beginning to acknowledge the lies mm -hmm. that are there about receiving. Will we all destroy and create all that? Yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can perceive it, but when Sylvia is doing that clearing, it, things get lighter. There's a lightness comes and it's clearing that density of judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that, you know, <laughs> I started to notice now as we're having this topic, some other stories that come in and you guys may begin to have your own notice those stories in your own life, but where you've been judged for your receiving, mm -hmm. there was, you know, growing up, 
um, and with the level of receiving that I can now acknowledge I had was such a wrongness. So some of the words that were used is like, Sylvia, you're so spoiled, you know, and and it seemed true because I would get what I would ask for. Yeah. <laughs> but that is such a wrongness. And uh, I remember one time I was in class and brought that up of this wrongness of being spoiled. Mm -hmm. And Gary Douglas, the founder of Access, said he goes, well, he goes, is that because you were actually was that used or said to you because you were willing to receive more than others yeah and it was like oh yeah they weren't willing to receive and that's where that judgment comes in like how dare you yeah great point sylvia so everywhere that you have been made wrong by anybody for receiving too much it's because they have to make you wrong or they are stupid and wrong for not receiving it so, <laughs> so everything that brings up yeah and everyone you've been looking to save other people so they don't go yeah. into the wrongness of them or whatever that is. Yeah. 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 Well, you destroy and uncreate all of that. Right. Wrong. Right. Online pod, pock, shorts, boys, pull ads and beyonds. So I, I was brought up in, in dire poverty and mm -hmm. I, I used to stand in the school queue, the school dinner queue, lunch queue. And there was only 10 people of a thousand and, and I was one of them. And I really had no point of view. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's my dad that doesn't work. You know, it's my, I don't want no point of view. And then I became the rich bitch in the village. I was then called the rich bitch. And I was like, well, I'm going to be judged no matter what. Which judgment would I rather have? You know, being poor or being the rich bitch? And I'm like, I'll be the rich bitch any day. <laughs> <laughs> and everything that brings up. <laughs> a good billion destroying and create it. Yes. And you know, this is so interesting, Moria, and I'm so grateful of, you know, we're beginning to hear these stories of each other that, yeah. you know, that we probably haven't told each other. But I grew up in, you know, in Northern California as the poor Mexican family. But I didn't I didn't notice the the lack mm -hmm. until later. I was like, oh, you mean having powdered milk in the house wasn't like like a great thing. And then noticing you know, where my mom would go to the food pantry or my dad would hunt a lot. So there was always meat. But I I guess that's where that perspective, that shift in perspective of what we call lack or poor, like that that willingness yeah. to see. It really is a perspective. Yeah. Thank you, Sylvia. It's a great point. Because I was this, we were a very similar. My father was a hunter and he would go out and hunt as well. And um, yeah, and and yeah it's a it truly is a perspective and on that note actually taking is literally an energy mm -hmm. it's if if you if you go to um if somebody gives gifts something to you whether it's their time whether it's a smile whatever it is rather than receive it you go to an energy it's an energy of take it's not an act. It literally is an energy. So it's a perspective. Like, oh, you, you're you're giving me that, and you want something in return. So you've already um, thwarted the the gift and the gift that you be in receiving. Wow. Yeah. And I have I I have this one story that for me gave me such a, a clarity of that in a way that I had not received before. And it was, I was at the market paying for something and there was a gentleman in front of me, probably in his early twenties, mm -hmm. just dirty, dirty. Like you could tell he was living on the streets for some yeah. time. And, you know, and I walked in and, or he finished up his transaction. I came in to pay for my things. And then I walked out and I, I met him. He, he came up and he looked at me and he said, he goes, you are so beautiful. And I remember in that moment, it's like I saw him, he said it, and I just said, thank you, thank you. Wow. And it was this space of just receiving what he yeah. was gifting me. Because yeah. it's also having an awareness when there's certain energies and you're like, whoa, run, right? But that wasn't this energy. Yeah. And I remember turning around and I actually went into tears. And yeah. I thought, what is this? I'm like, oh, like I, like maybe perhaps very few people in his world received, received what yeah. he was gifting me with that. Yeah. 
And I was so moved. I thought, wow, did, is this part of the energy it contributed to him by me not judging him, by yeah. me receiving that? Totally. And I was like, wow, that is the generosity of spirit that I see in the world, is I, that willingness to receive. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, I'm like, wow, okay, more of that. Like when we're. That's the world I would like to live in, where we just had that generosity of spirit with each other. And there was no such thing as judgment. None. Yeah. It's, it's, the thing is, judgment isn't real. It's an artificial construct that was designed to keep us all separated, to keep us from being as powerful as we are. Judgment was designed to stop you. It was designed to control you. Yeah, so it's not real. It is not real. And that's an ask that you can have. What would it take to know that it's not real? Yeah. So everywhere you've been using judgment as a way to justify the no receiving, will you all destroy and uncreate all of that? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod pop shots, boys, pull vads, and beyonds. Wow, that's moving chunks. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. And I'm I'm yeah. so delighted, Moira. One, this conversation, because it is a big conversation. Yeah. You know, to begin to dismantle what we've grown up with as real and true that isn't. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, one more thing I want to add to that. Before before we look and see if we have any questions is the other thing that, that this whole construct of give and take and receiving being a wrongness, like there is a rightness in not receiving, is, um, <clears throat> is to get us to not step up. Because when you start to receive, you step up as a being, you step up your game, you step up everything, you become greater. And the whole thing is designed to get you to go to shame and go to all of the negative, all of the energies that stop you from being greater, being more. So that's that's something that I would definitely say, keeping your awareness to cont contemplate is designed to keep you small. I mean, there are a lot of people that will, um, <clears throat> even like local Italian people, like maybe from Torino or whatever, they'll come here to the castle and they will stand outside the castle door and they'll look and they'll go, oh, I really want to go in, but it's really uncomfortable walking in there. It's very uncomfortable to walk in. And there are so many people that will turn and walk away because they tell themselves, tell themselves that that's not for them or they don't fit in there or it, they don't suit they don't suit the castle or, you know, oh, that will be too expensive for me. Or so many, I mean, you can come in here and have a coffee for three euros, or, you know, but people will walk away because it's not them. And that's also this, I'll say this pride, but this, the rightness of not receiving as well. Cause I, I know I have, you know, family members or different people that would probably not go Oh, but it's this pride, like, Oh, that's, you know, they'll dismiss it in some way. And yeah. I'm so grateful because of the elegance and um, the beauty that I've been invited to, you know, being at the castle or out at El Lugar, these are, you know, different places that both Gary Douglas with many yeah. other magical, incredible beings have created around the world. But there's this elegance and abundance I did not grow up with. And Moira, I think that's probably the same for you. Same for Absolutely. Where, yeah. where we had the plastic cup in the middle of the table with silverware and grab what you need. <laughs> My parents used to say to me, it's just things. Mm -hmm. Don't get, don't, I mean, they used to say, don't get attached to things. But they'd also, what, what was implied with that is don't receive anything. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And to be happy and satisfied with the least amount. Yeah. You don't need it. It's frivolous. <laughs> My father said something. And this, like, we're bringing up all these things, but what did you all hear growing up? What were those phrases and comments that your parents said about receiving, about money, about... Um, you know, all, yeah, the opulence, that, that, that richness. My mom once said, oh, it's better, it's better to have friends than money. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah, or, neither or. <laughs> or never think you're, you're greater than anyone else because you have more. 
Yeah. Now, that one stuck me for a while at nine years old. I made it mean all sorts of things. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's also, I get now my father's way of trying to protect me because he did choose more than most of his relatives, yeah. you know, to the, to the level that he was willing to receive. And he received a lot of judgment for that. Yeah. You know, um, a, his willingness to have more was a judgmental offense. Yeah. So anywhere any of you guys are buying that you are more if you have more, like, you know, I've got a better house, I've got a better car, that makes me greater than Joe Bloggs down the road. That is absolute and utter bullshit. So everything that is, yes. <laughs> are you willing to destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right and wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, pox, shorts, boys, po and yarns. You're not your house, you're not your car, you're not your clothes. Yeah. And, and I would say that may that energy might come up but one of the tools the i would say one of the foundational tools to a lot of this is to begin to ask yourself truth does that belong to me because you may be aware of other people judging themselves by what you have chosen and it doesn't belong to you it's not really your thought um i remember when i um first got my um i have a, a mercedes coupe and I bought it out in Northern California. And I would have people go like, what had you choose that car? Like, why that car? Why not, why not a Prius, right? Or a, you know, <laughs> in the Northern California. And then yeah. I had my boss, my boss say, every time she'd come my car, she's all, you're such a rich bitch, you know? And, and it took me a while to begin to receive that because I would go drop off my son at school and he'd like to play his music loud. And as soon as we'd go on camp, I'm all, drop the so what are you doing? He's like, <laughs> you're not one to hide. But I was like, oh, just, but I didn't want to draw the attention. Oh, the- I've never had that. I have <laughs> never had that. I would pull up in a Ferrari and go, hi. Without, I don't mean like, I'm I'm the car. No. Like, but just, yeah. So, but that has shifted. And now it's like, I'm so grateful, you know, or just different spaces and choices. It's like, Oh, but how many people hide the luxury, the abundance, the ease, the joy that they have in their lives? Because they shouldn't enjoy that when other people aren't choosing it. Yeah. And it really is. Now, this is going to bring up a lot of controversy. And oh, well, but it really is a choice. I mean, I chose money very young. And when I say very young, I chose at 10. I'm not living like this. I'm having money. And Mm -hmm. it started to show up when I was 14. I met a friend who was wealthy and I spent more time at her house. And then I chose a rich boyfriend. And then it just went from there. But it really was a choice to um, choose money. I was like, I ain't having this. I'm not. I know I'm sat in a castle. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> do you have any point of view that anybody's judgment fuck no <laughs> <laughs> and i love i love these stories because it's also to I, we hope this is inviting you all to acknowledge just because of where you started even where you are now does not mean there isn't more to receive mm. and the invitation to go wow if i was to begin to open myself to receiving what's been perhaps available for you would you have more ease in every area? Yeah. And and this isn't about this is right or this is wrong. It's like, no. it's just, you know, are you asking for more? Mm. If you are. I, I just, yeah. Right. I'd love to say this title came about because I was facilitating somebody, oh, two weeks ago, a friend. And, and, she, and this is where the title came from. She, I said, so what's that energy? She went, it's the rightness of not receiving. And I'm like, you have a rightness and not receiving. And then I had to look and see where I had bits of that. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, my goodness. That's the, that's in my life, too. What, in this area or this area. But, um, wow, my head's gone blank. I wanted to talk about the rightness of. Oh, yeah. So what, how we, what we got to was she wouldn't acknowledge what she really would like to have in her life and has of, as her life because she couldn't see the how to get it. Oh, Moira, we're going to have to do another call on that. Cause yeah. that okay. No, because I love that. That is in my world right now. It's like I have created and been willing to receive what I have chosen so far. Mm-hmm. And I can perceive there is so much more available. Yeah. But, I, but the willingness to go, okay, what would I like? It's almost like how many of you keep your little wish list kind of hidden from everyone or you write it and then you erase or cross out. No, that's too much. Yeah. You know, that 
willingness to, yeah. So I, yeah, maybe we do another call, but uh, okay. if you guys would like another call on that, like really choosing to ask for perhaps write down, but to acknowledge what you would like to have that may not match anyone else. Yeah. And, and, and you will have to go to the rightness of not receiving if you are justifying not asking because you can't see the how. It's much I'm easier to go, I don't want that, and to not even acknowledge it. And to I never don't need that. Yeah. yeah, that's a whole other call. Anyway, we've been on here for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I hope some of you guys have got some awareness of the insanity of not receiving. And it's and it's not wrong. It's just entrainment. It's indoctrination and then entrainment that we keep gaslighting ourselves every day with the same thing. There's a rightness in not asking for this. There's a rightness in not receiving. Yeah. And where can you now use the clearing statement if you're new to these access consciousness yeah. tools? Pull out that clearing statement. And as you notice these different energies come up in your life, start to destroy and uncreate everything and that is, even though you don't have it figured out and you might be surprised what shows up. It's so. energetic. Give it a go. <laughs> Thank you, Moira. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank you, Translator. This has been translated into many languages. So thank you so much. Very yes. grateful. And we look forward to seeing you all soon and stay tuned. Moira and I are continuing to create some fun things. So <laughs> we will be sharing, yep, an upcoming class and perhaps another live with a different topic. Um, cool. Do you want to say anything about the class that we have coming up in May? Well, it's a magic class. And that's literally how I got to where I am today. I just chose and chose and chose. And yeah, it's it's. Uh, it's something that is far simpler than people believe it is. But when you are not willing to perceive you as um, the space that you actually are, and that's a whole thing that we're going to be talking about in the class, then you will rule out magic. I mean, I ruled out a lot of it when I was very young because my parents said, that's your imagination. That's not possible. You know, even like I could talk, I could talk to the dog. That was considered like insane. Even yeah. that. It was like, you can't talk to the dog. And I'm like, watch this. And the dog would do what I would ask, you know. But there was a lot of things I let go of because I was told that it wasn't possible. So how many of you are telling yourself uh, that's airy fairy nonsense? So the class is about magic. It's um, called, it's based on a book um, called Magic, You Are It, Be It. And um, this will be the first class done on this um, topic. Um, it's a 2.5 day class. There's an intro um, on uh, the Friday evening. No, Thursday That's evening, I think. Thursday. And, then, and then that is followed by the two days. So you can come to the intro or you can come to the full class. And believe me, you will get a level of awareness that will astound you. Yes. So we look forward to sharing more with you about this class. We'll put different links in different places for you guys to check it out and ask and see if this class is for you. And definitely a topic that I am excited to dive in and, and explore with many of you because there is a level of ease and a level of actualizing what you'd like to have in your life that many few and few people are willing to to have. So we will that explore that. And that may include money. It may include all sorts of things. So thank you, Moira, for um, <laughs> inviting this, uh, this energy out in the world and playing. So thank you, everyone. Ciao, everyone. Thank you.